it's part of mankind to want to explore and we can't even help ourselves. Part of that has to do with this whole thing of curiosity, that you're tremendously curious about the world and you want to try and understand it better. In my own personal case, at a very young age, I saw myself as an explorer. Johann Reinhardt is a high-altitude explorer and archaeologist who has spent decades exploring the lands of the Incan Empire, with a particular focus on the Andes Mountains. Uh, the reason that we study high-altitude archaeology and why it's so important in, in our minds is that the items that we're finding are normally uh, undisturbed. We're able to get them so well preserved that many of them can look like they're new, and that includes uh, frozen mummies. What we have is a flexed body. You can see the head here that's been, uh, it's lost its hair, it's been colored in red, and it has like this crown around it. Uh, the knees are flexed here, and then it has several offerings placed, you know, right beside it. And these are miniature offerings, and really fine ink of ceramic work. These ancient artifacts are excavated in order to preserve them. Otherwise, there is always the threat of looters scavenging the site. So well preserved that many of them can look like they're new, and that includes uh, frozen mummies. It's the one of the few places in the world where you can get mummies that are virtually perfectly preserved because they were sacrificed and interred at these high altitudes. Therefore, there was no decomposition that had taken place, unlike mummies almost anywhere else in the world. The Andes made up the backbone of the Inca Empire. These mountains span some 5,500 miles, forming a consistent series of plateaus and high peaks along the western edge of South America. Emerging in the early 13th century, the Inca conquered millions of people in less than a hundred years, forming the largest empire of the Americas prior to European influence. For the Incas, the Andes were more than just scenery. The mountains were worshipped as gods. The Incas were polytheists, meaning they worshipped many gods. Most of these deities presided over elements of nature, such as the sun, rain, thunder and lightning, and a particularly ill-tempered god believed to have caused earthquakes. To honor or appease these deities, the Incas made a variety of offerings. In the most extreme cases, this included human sacrifice. Over 500 years later, Johan and his climbing partner discovered the remains of one of these sacrifices. When we climbed the peak and we found the mummy, then we knew it, we were really onto something, that they had not just worshipped it from afar, but they'd actually climbed to the summit and made these sacrificial offerings. The mere fact that these kinds of ruins existed so long ago indicated that the world's first climbers were actually the Incas. We don't know of anyone ever having reached those altitudes before the Incas. The Incas are a very special case. And uh, you sit and look around and you can see over 100 miles, you can see scores of 6,000 meter peaks, and you can say on uh, almost all of those that we know about, there are Inca sites. Few have experienced the view from these archaeological sites. Few have seen what the Incas must have seen on their religious journey. It was a tremendous feeling of accomplishment and at the end of the expedition I stayed behind on the summit till everybody had left and uh, just reflected on, on what by that time had been 20 years and hundreds of ascents and, and thought nothing's going to ever beat this probably in my life.